all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. It's a featherweight knockout, the lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water, exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. Hey, tune into this week's video for a COD regulation update. A prep for that sea bass season, a look into Montauk party boat fishing, and plenty of reports from around the island. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is the 6th of June, and here is the Fishing News for the week. State cod regulations are now in line with the federal regulations and they are the following. The season will be September 1st to May 31st. Sizes go up from 21 to 23 inches and the bag limit is going to go down from 10 fish to 5 fish. These regulations go into effect starting on June 12th. For nearly 90 years, the Viking fleet from Montauk has been putting anglers on the fish. Whether you jump on a half-day trip, fish the deep for an overnight adventure targeting big game, a day trip to block, or a sunset cruise, their experienced captains and crew have you covered. Vikingfleet.com We've got another open boat this week, and we're getting prepped for the season. That sea bass, Jenny Ackerman, has some tips on sea bass fishing for us. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. Now today we are gonna talk about a rig that I like to use for sea bass. Sea bass fishing right now across the region has been red hot. People are slinging up some big knuckleheads on their boats and everything and just absolutely crushing the sea bass. So this is a rig that's gonna help you guys get in on the red hot sea bass bite. To start, you got yourself some 40 pound mono and what I'm gonna do first is, I don't cut my leader material off the spool just yet. I wanna work with as much as I can first. At the very bottom of the rig, you're gonna tie a little surgeon's loop. And this surgeon's loop is gonna be for your sinker. Now, based off of the region you're in or like the underwater current, you can have up to like a four to eight ounce sinker. You can go a little heavy because you need to get that stuff down to the bottom quick. So you have your surgeon's loop on the bottom, and then you're gonna give yourself about six inches of space to work with, and you're gonna do a dropper loop. So the dropper loop, take your leader, and you're gonna fold it so it makes a loop. But compared to like, like for striper fishing, a teaser rig, you wanna make that dropper loop a lot longer. So you have that much space. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna pass it through. So what you do is you take it, pass it through one, two, three, four, five times. And then you're gonna take the loop and actually pass it through the mini loop you just made by twisting it. And what I do is I grab it with my teeth and I'll pull. So grab it with my teeth and pull. There's your dropper loop. So another six inches up, you're gonna do another dropper loop. And if you really wanna get into some triple headers, and flex on the boat that you're catching three at once, you can do another one, another six inches up. So it's a significantly long rig, but you can make it work. So the hooks I like to use, a lot of people use a couple different hooks when you're sea bass fishing, but the ones that I like to use are the classic bait holder hooks. Why do I like bait holder hooks? Because they have those back barbs on the back. Just like while I'm fluking, I don't want a fish to yank my bait off on that first drop. So when I'm sea bass fishing, I'll put clam on here and I'll make sure it rides up onto those barbs so they're not ripping it off. I have opportunity to catch. And the size I use, I like the four rocks because you know, big hooks catch big fish. So once you have your two to three droppers tied on, you're just gonna feed the 40 pound material through the eyelet and then just, I do a double pass. So what I do here, you can see, I pass it through once, I twist it with my fingers and I pass it through again. This is any time I do a dropper loop. It's just, it's a good habit to have. It just adds extra security to it. And that's your whole rig. Now you can drop it down, you can get ready to hook up into some nice knuckleheads and it's nice, 
but it's also kind of, I mean, you're not going to keep them anyway because they're out of season, but it's still nice to catch them in the warm weather. You can get some nice blackfish if you're dropping down a clam. Now, hopefully you guys take advantage of the rig tying and get out there and get some action in on this hot sea bass bite. And stay tuned for next week's where if you guys like jigging up some fish, I'm going to show you guys the one sea bass jig to rule them all. Catch you next week. Well, this week I had the pleasure of jumping on the Viking Starship for a half day trip. Had a nice day of mixed bag fishing. Take a look at how it went down. We're at the end of the island in Montauk, New York. And I'm fishing on the Viking Star today for a half day trip that consists of porgies, fluke, and maybe even some striped bass jigging. Today I brought my own gear, but if you choose to fish with these guys, they have everything you need to be covered for a day of fishing, including rods, reels, tackle, and baits. How you doing, guys? All right, so whenever I'm fishing on a party boat, pretty much wherever I want to fish, I just take somebody else's rod and just move it because that's my favorite spot. And I'll put my stuff there. And, you know, forget that person because that's just where I keep my stuff. Dude, are you serious? What? I wanted that Wait spot. <laughs> People come to Montauk to go fishing because they know it's fishing capital of the world. Plenty, plenty of fish, plenty of nutrients to keep the fish. And they fish with us with the Viking fleet just because we've been around so long and we have top number one captains. All, all the captains here are very seasoned. We've been doing it a very long time. We know the waters, inshore, offshore. Tuna fishing and to fluke fishing, we've done, we've conquered every fishery there is. Most important thing is that we enjoy going fishing, taking people fishing. So the great thing about fishing in Montauk is the diversity of what's in the water out here. You know, we had fluke on the menu, porgies, but we're gonna start off striper jigging because there's some birds working out this way over here. We're approaching a rip and we have a really good tide for jigging stripers too. So we're gonna try and jig up a few stripers to begin this trip with. So I put a bucktail jig on. I was able to get down to the bottom with some light tackle in Montauk over here. I think I'm connected to a bass. We're gonna see in one second. Nice fish. There we go. Nice little bass, not quite a slot, but nice fish nonetheless and fun and light tackle. All right, let's send him back. We've always wanted to do fishing because Montauk fishing in Montauk is like really famous, I guess one of the most famous spots in the world, right? Um, so we decided to take a quick trip here and then um, fishing is definitely on our list to do here, right here in Montauk. It's so fun that we can actually have our little kids here too. Because I thought usually fishing trips, I thought you, you have to be like adults or like kids. So that's super fun. And then I got to catch two fish. Oh, the blue fish, I think. He's a great eating size blue fish too. So one of the really nice things about coming out in a party boat, as opposed to having your own boat, is the mates do all the work for you. They're going to rig up your setups, get your bait ready, cut your bait, fillet your fish at the end of the day when you catch something. It's really a very leisurely laid back experience. And it's if you're not looking to get ha dirty, hands on involved, we highly recommend you hop on a party boat and let the experts do the work for you. The diversity on these trips is really awesome. I mean, already striped bass in the boat, bluefish, giant porgies, and we're going to go fluke fishing too, and that's all in a half day trip. That's a lot to get into a half day, but it's a lot of good fishing, and you can do it all in the short shot here in Montauk. 
All in all, it was a great day. We caught all the species that we talked about, from fluke to striped bass, to throwback sea bass, to porgies, to bluefish. I'm Matt Broderick, Fisher Magazine. With high room rates in Montauk, Captain Forsberg shares a Viking fishing hack with us that could potentially save anglers hundreds of dollars. Yeah, we, we do overnight trips. We do two, three, four day trips. Um, and what basically the people do is we, I encourage them to, is come out the night before to, to beat the traffic. And then when they get here, they could load the boat and stay on the boat, go out to dinner. And in between trips, we have guys that come and they do two trips in a row, offshore overnighters, and they'll just stay on a boat and they're home. They're just making home for a couple of days. We've got Tim C. Smith with the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash updates. And now the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge entries for the week. We're into week six of the Fisherman's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, and here's this week's entries. We have Joseph Yam of Flushing, New York, who weighed in his porgy of 2.34 pounds, placing him in second in the porgy category. Then we have Stefan Molbauer of Port Washington, New York, with a sea robin weighing in at 2.65 pounds, also placing him in second in the sea robin category. And then there's the first fluke on the board at 11.76 pounds, caught by Scott Waterman of Canterbury, Connecticut. In the weak fish category, there's been a shuffle. We have entries in from Tom Lucas of Mastic Beach, New York, weighing in his weak fish of 9.5 pounds, taking the first spot in the weak fish category. Timothy Kraus from the North Fork of Long Island with his weak fish of 6.55 pounds. Then we have Andreas Brundler from Hampton Bays, New York with his 5.6 pound tide runner and Robert Reed of Atco, New Jersey with his weak fish coming in at 5.11 pounds. So the top spot still remains with Anthony Savino with 21 points and the second and third spots, it's a tie with Frank Shea and Scott Waterman at 10 points each. Just a reminder, for your chance to win the grand prize Tiger Craft powered by Yamaha and other great prizes, you need to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine and use the 2024 entry form filled out completely, available at thefisherman.com slash contests. It was another busy week in the Coastal Kayak Clash. The big fish of the week goes to Ken Stark for his 45.5 inch striper, landing him in second place for the category. We had two nice sea bass hit the board. Todd Trezone voted this third place 17.5 incher and Al Green landed in second place with a 20 incher. Jeremy Kurtz floats into third place in the flu category with his 22.5 incher. And Gregory Vergere gets a step closer to the top three with his 22.75 inch weak fish. The top three looks like this. Mike Radzowinski holds third place with five points. Bob Wagner remains in second place with six points. Justin Osa remains at the top of the race with nine points. To get all the information on how to enter, visit thefisherman.com slash contests. All right, let's head on over to the events. We have the Manhattan Cup on June 7th. That's that catch and release striper tournament out of New York City. Then on June 8th is the first annual Grand Slam Striper Tournament located in Patchogue. June 15th is going to be Bowie 35's first annual Father's Day Bass Tournament. Then on June 22nd is the South Shore Invitational Charity Fishing Tournament. And on June 22nd as well is the Great Gun Mauritius Anglers Inshore and Offshore Fishing Tournament. For more on events, visit thefisherman.com slash events. All right, let's head on over to that report map. I'll tell you what I've been hearing and show you some catches from the week. Matt Izzo, he had a personal best fluke. That was 11.13 pounds. That was caught in Mauritius Bay. That was on June 4th. He had it on the old-fashioned squid and spearing combo. Big fish are moving into Mauritius. Ella Lanza, she sews off a 39-inch striper caught on a flutter spoon over in Oyster Bay. James Cogger, he had a 23 and a half inch fluke caught from the shore in Bellport Bay. He said it was caught on a teaser rig with a half ounce bucktail tipped with gold. Real light, gotta like that, James. Billy Tuttle, nine years old, he caught his first striper ever on his grandfather's boat last week. It was caught in Huntington over in the Long Island Sound. 
the fish was released because it was an over. They took some quick pictures and they got it right back in. Mike, he had bass to 48 inches trolling inside the three mile line southwest of Debs. Released those fish as well. Billy's on the Bay tournament. That was last week. It was the 14th annual fluke shootout. Over 60 boats participated. Uh, we got first place was Stephen Burns with a 28 inch fluke. That was 10.8 pounds. More double digits in the bay. He's fishing on the double B with Bob Fab and Barry Barth. Saturday, back by Green Island. A 20-inch fluke was caught by Chris on a spearing on a fluke rig. We caught two huge bass in the Western Sound yesterday along with several others. Both of the big girls were just shy of 50 inches, measuring 46 and 48. We got them on NLB and 8-inch paddle tails. We came across a school of big bass busting up on a bunker pod on the surface. The bass hung around after and we used big paddle tails to get down to them. My cousin Joe caught two monsters, end quote. Nice job, Joe. Anthony Drummond, he told us that there was some keep, keeper fluke in Mauritius. Now shifting to bass in freshwater. We got a little freshwater port going on. Uh, we got this one. Large mouth bass are active now and getting more aggressive. My report is on the great bluegill bite going on during the week. I even put my 19-year-old son, Will, got him off the computer to have some fun on the float and fly combo. He had some nice bluegills, end quote. James Aquista, he caught and released his gator bluefish on the 26th of May. That was a couple weeks ago. Diamond Jing aboard the Montauk Bay's charter boat, the Trophy Hunter. Thank you, Captain Mike, for the submission. Andrew Mallon, he said, by the skin of his teeth, my son Dean officially joined the 50-pound club. This big girl weighed in at 50 and a half pounds after taking a bunker head in Hempstead Harbor just before midnight. Fought on relatively light tackle. She battled for a few minutes before surrendering. After a quick pick, she swam away strong. Congratulations, Dean. And I did hear Dean got another 50 later that week. Make it two. That's awesome. Eddie Gonzalez picked up these two blues in the back of Jones Inlet. He was fishing for fluke, but he ended up catching one squid and a diamond jig. Mike Gone, he caught this 46-incher outside of Deb's Inlet on a live bunker last week. Bill, he went fishing with Rich the Weatherman. We all know Rich for his great weather reports and fishing reports. Uh, great day. Eight bass between us, two between the two of us, all released south of western Nassau County. That's what Bill told me. Then Ben Casper, he's eight years old. He caught his first fluke on Memorial Day at Union Dock in Santa Mauritius. That Mauritius bite for fluke is starting to heat up. Fish was 21 inches. Mark and Tanya Ferks, they reported good striper bites in the ocean outside of Fire Island Inlet as well. All the inlets are getting them. And then Pete Egbert, he had a weak fish off of Long Beach on the ocean side on Gulp Swimming Mullets. If you do have a notable catch yourself, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com with all the details, and I will try and get into the weekly video fishing forecast or the magazine. Meteorologist Rich Von Owens' weekend weather is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. We'll check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So uh, last week, got the tail end of that really great striped bass run that we had seen in the ocean between Breezy Point, the Rockaways, East Rockaway Inlet, and out towards Jones Inlet, uh, my buddy Frankie and I were on them, and we had a couple of fish, you know, you know, picked a few here, upwards of 35 pounds on the live bunker, also the chunks, so it was kind of cool. There's some very big, uh, smooth dogfish now in the ocean. Just watch for those, too, if you're doing some, you know, bait fishing there. So I switched gears back in the bay this week. I went to the uh, topwater plugs in the back bays and had some nice schooly bass, 18 to 23 inches. Smaller fish, but a blast on the light tackle on top water. Switch gears and went to the uh, the Bucktails and Gulp and had some nice fluke. Reynolds Channel has been really good this year. We've had plenty of fluke upwards of uh, you know 21, 22, maybe 23 inches with lots of shorts in the mix. So you can uh, get these on the uh, good stages of the tide. No slip cuts. So if you want to make that move to the west, you know there's some really good fishing there. 
off to the Western Reynolds Channel. So water temps coming up. We got some 60s now. Warm weather coming in uh, Friday, Saturday. We got the little westerly breeze. Both days look okay. Uh, Sunday, the questionable day this weekend is more of a southwest breeze with that front uh, coming in. It could get a little gusty at times, a little bit dicey. So just check those apps as you get closer. Uh, Saturday, you know, westerly, 5 to 15, gust to 20 late. Sunday, we start to see some 15 to 20s on there. The ocean can get a little bit riled up. The sound should be okay. The bay's okay. The surf should be all right. But just watch that ocean on Sunday. Check the apps as you get closer. Saturday's okay. Sunday, a little rougher. So again, just uh, be aware of that as we head into the weekend. Uh, temperatures, both days, Saturday and Sunday, not too hot. We got mostly some 70s. Looks pretty good. One of my go-to apps and sites, the Wind Guru. Friday looks good. A little westerly, a little gusty in the evening at night. Saturday, it's more of a, a westerly steady day. 10 to 15, maybe gust to 20 late. And then, you know, Sunday, watch out. Just check those apps as you get closer. Uh, showing that it could be a little bit dicey with winds getting up to 20, 25 from the southwest. So the weekend weather deal, Friday, Saturday, looked terrific. Sunday, a little questionable. And again, we'll see how things kind of pan out as we get towards the weekend. But overall, uh, some pretty good fishing going on across the island. Looks good. Catch them up. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody. As you can see, the bass bite's still going pretty strong out here in Montauk. Flukin's definitely starting to pick up and we're starting to see some tuna offshore. So things are really starting to settle in. We're starting to get a good report. This guy was caught on a bucktail, white on white, white bucktail, white pork rind. And then we're gonna let this guy go. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Matt. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Uh, report this week out of Sag Harbor. Striped bass fishing just continues to get better and better, uh, basically to the west, kind of out of Shinnecock. Uh, and on the ocean side, there's tons of overs and, and fish to 40, 50 plus pounds on the bunker pods, uh, even seeing some, some giant bluefin and uh, you know, some random, random creatures out there. Uh, striped bass fishing continues to get uh, good in our area locally in the Peconic, as well as up by Montauk and the Rips. Uh, Bluefish as well, kind of invading our home waters, back bays. Uh, gators are always a ton of fun, especially on light tackle and top water. Uh, and lastly, obviously, there's always great bottom fishing with, uh, you know, poreys and, and, and blowfish and, and things that are good for, uh, for the meat all. Thanks, Will and Matt. So also out of Sag Harbor this week, um, the weak fish bite has also remained pretty steady, both on jigs and bait as well. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And the fluke bite has been a little bit tough, but still there are fluke being caught around. Nothing huge, but still um, pretty decent um, up around Beconic, Green Lawns area, etc. And of course we have black sea bass season fast approaching in a couple weeks. So really excited about that as well. Um, our favorite ceviche fish personally for us. And um, as Will said before too, there's some giant bluefin sightings um, off the beach around those bunker pods, which is great and hopefully the smaller fish start to trickle in as well so we can keep them and have that sushi. So thanks and back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Had that spectacular bass fishing going on again last weekend. Just big fish on big bunker pods, uh, live lining, top water stuff. It was, it was all working and uh, really quite a thrill. I got a nice one on Friday, number of, number of other really nice fish, and especially this one here by Brennan Monahan. Good job, buddy, and nice job uh, with his father, Tim, getting him on that fish west of Mariches. Uh, the bass and the bunker seem to kind of like thin out a little bit um, going into like the middle of, the, of this week. Uh, I was out the other day and we ran down from Mariches down to Quag and then to Smith Point Pavilion got into some bunker there, got a couple of bites in and connect, saw a few other people um, get a couple of fish and uh, just gorgeous night to be on the water. But, you know, I think there's another wave coming in, plenty of fish to the west. So um, might just be a couple of days where it just slows down a little bit. Surf casting, there've been some nice bass around at night. If you grind, you're gonna get them. And, uh, but you also have to contend with some big blues and that goes as well in the inlets. Uh, you know, drifting through there. We donated a lot of tackle the other day, trying to get a bass when uh, we couldn't find one out front, going through the inlet and uh, just got into some big blues. So that's going on. Fluke bite improves day by day. Some nice, some nice ones in the uh, skinny water of the bays. A few out front, but um, have heard more of like some doormats in those, in that shallow water of the bays. Uh, you don't need a boat to get at them. If you look up some of Matt Broderick's uh, videos from last year, shorebound fluking, uh, you'll see kind of the technique, the setup, 
and uh, really a lot of fun and, and some keepers around. A number of guys I know got a few last week. So one of the lowest part of the tide is when you want to try to uh, fish for them. And uh, those giant bluefin spooled a number of people that were out gunned on their striper gear. Did see a few people out uh, trolling with green sticks, which is pretty wild. So close to the beach this time of year. So a lot of good stuff going on. I hope you're able to get out there and fish this weekend. Let us know how you do. Tomorrow is the Manhattan Cup. We just want to thank the fishermen and all our sponsors for the generosity to be able to put this on. We're going to have a spectacular day. We're going to help a lot of veterans. We're going to change some lives, and uh, I'm happy to be part of it. Any of you that are coming to it, if I don't know you, please say hi. If I do, looking forward to seeing you. And um, it, with the podcast that Matt and I are doing, first episode is up on our YouTube channel, and that's I talk about uh, the kind of the start of my fishing journey as well as the Manhattan Cup. So if you have to get amped up a little bit, go ahead and check that out. All right, that's it for now. Let us know how you do. Back to you, Matt. Aloha, Hawaiian Dan. What do you got for us this week? Thanks, Matt. Aloha, friends. I'm Hawaiian Dan of TalkFishTV.com reporting for the Fisherman Magazine. This week on the central north shore and south shore of Long Island. On the North Shore, I've been zipping around with my Sea Eagle Fast Cat 14 inflatable catamaran boat from SeaEagle.com, and things have pretty much been status quo. Lots of tiny rain bait in the area in the half inch to two inch sizes, but what has really changed is I finally figured out how to constantly trigger strikes. It wasn't the bait, it was the cadence. If you pay close attention to the bait, you'll notice they're not moving fast or erratically, and the bass are feeding exactly the same way, slowly gulping and slurping down tiny sand eels, and that's how you'll want to present. I found a 3-inch NLBN paddle tail to be the most effective with a very, very slow retrieval. Slight snaps, then let it fall for a few seconds, and repeat this until you trigger a strike. Now be sure to subscribe to the channel for next week's report because things are yet changing again. On the south shore, it's all about finding the bait, which is bunker. Find the bunker, observe their behavior, and present according to what you see. On this day, I was out with my buddy Zach, and the bunker were moving extremely fast and in a straight line and instead of circles. This tells you they're being chased, so how do you present for your best chance to catch? Not off to the side or traditionally off the back of the pod because they're moving too fast. So you need to get well ahead of the pod, turn off your engine, present in front of them, and let the bunker pass right through. The feeding bass will then pick up your easy feed presentation, and you just keep repeating that process. Now get off those couches, grab some friends, and let's get out there and fish. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Hawaiian Dan or TalkFishTV.com, and I'll do my best to help. Don't forget to sign up for the June 23rd Duke of Fluke Tournament. It's open to kayaks which needs more entries to make that division a green light, and of course it's open to boats. Both have amazing payouts and a spectacular after party. For more information, visit allpronational.com. Until next week, stay safe out there, continue to look out for one another, and keep spreading that aloha! Now back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have the Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey folks, want to give you the fast wrap up. We've had a lot of fun this week. A lot of stuff's going on. What's really interesting is like the, the water here with this uh, whole large schools of uh, mackerel that have been running back and forth. It's got the bluefish in, it's got the bass running. Uh, fluking, this is one of the best seasons we've had of fluking, but a lot of this fluking is east of us over here off of Eaton's Neck in the, in the Huntington Bay area. So you got to go to the east to get the better fluke for the most part. There are areas inside the bay, but you just don't see them as active as at the outside. I mean, the Long Island Sound is really alive and it's a stretch from right from our shores right across the Connecticut. And uh, if you're on a boat or the shore, it really depends on where you're located. But the fishing has just been really good. The strange thing I see is that a lot of times this time of the year, we should see a lot of porgies inside the bay. I'm seeing some porgies inside the bay, but uh, for the most part, not that many. And they're loaded on the outside. Is it because of the sand eel hatch, which is just dynamic? You know, Cold Spring Harbor, Huntington, back of uh, Lloyd's Harbor. We had it in Northport as well, but mainly to the west of us is a huge cinder worm hatch right now. And uh, these fish are just like slurping away at night. So you want to stick cinder worm patterns this week if you're uh, really in that type of a fishery. If you're going for porgies, you gotta be in like, you know, to the east of us, that's all I could tell you. Because uh, locally, it's slim pickings on. 
but uh, there's a lot of other stuff to do. Wheat fish is still in there locally, and uh, that's a great thing to do. So just go out, have fun, keep coming on those memories. You know, you don't need to be preached to. Just go out, have a great time. Yes. Oh, and as always, I bid you peace and tight lines. From Huntington, Captain Gage, Simon. Thanks, Matt. What's up, everybody? Captain Gage here reporting to you from Huntington Harbor, where I fish seven days a week for SandCityCharter.com. Check it out. So last week, I was editing my report in between charters to get it out to the Long Island Fish Minute time. So Steve, Charlie, and Kenny were our morning charter. Three salty local guys, five minutes onto the fishing grounds, and boom, rods are bending. So we had a great day, awesome time with these guys. We had so much fun with them that they've already booked in next charter and they're coming back out again next week so we're excited to have them back out and then that evening Corbin brought down Corby and Locke to get these two young fine anglers nine years old and ten years old they wanted to get into a big bass that was their quest and boy did we do just that these two kids had a ball fighting a 40 inch 30 pound bass when they got it on board I said the next fish you guys catch is gonna look very small to this guys so don't think the next fish is gonna be as big as this and you can see by the smiles and their faces so congratulations to these two young kids they did a fantastic job getting this fish on board taking a quick photo and getting it back in the water releasing it safely um, we do have a digital scale on board so we do get to weigh the fish uh, without hanging them vertically so that's real important to us uh, we also tag these fish another important thing that we'd like to do here on sand city charter um, then we had saturday we had larry sprung came down with his two sons, Zach and Jeremy. These guys came down with one of the hockey buddies and boy, it was a much slower bite. Uh, it was high tide, so we really didn't have moving water. We had to wait for the fish to start chewing, but uh, we did manage to get a couple of overs over the gunnels, so that was a fun day. We had a great time, and uh, congratulations going out to Eric Hernandez on the why not again. He put his nephew, Nicky, on a great fish, as you can see here in the photographs. Uh, Nicky having a ball fighting this fish like a big guy. It looked awesome. I had said to Eric, what a great job, and uh, he said his nephew had a great time doing it, so congratulations to Nikki. Guys, the bunker are here. Uh, Corbin's trip, we had him out there throwing into pods a bunker. He was uh, throwing a popper in there or a super strike, and he had a couple of big followers come up after one fish hit his super strike but missed it, and uh, he didn't connect, but it was great to see the uh, top water action with the bunker. Uh, they're here. They're in the back bays. Guys next to us were catching decent sized mackerel so there's a lot of mackerel around the bunker are here uh, yesterday the birds were working the fish were blowing up on sand eels so it, it's alive out there it is on fire if you want to get on a fish now is the time to get out there especially if you want to get on the bass and the blues do some top water action we're willing to get out there at 5 30 in the morning you want to go out there at six o'clock at night we'll go out there and do night trips you want to go out at eight o'clock we'll go sit on the chunk whatever you want to do we're down give us a call check us out at sandcitycharter.com Com, wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Back to you, Matt. With the fly and fresh water reports, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, it's been very nice weather this week. A little windy, but we have a lot of we have a lot of action going on. I've been hearing, first of all, I've been hearing around the Jones Beach area a lot of bluefish, which are a lot of fun on a fly rod. You can't you can't deny that. Um, as stripers, I'm hearing much bigger ones out out east. Um, I'm starting to hear bigger ones are starting to hit the Block Island and the Rhode Island area and the Connecticut shore. But it's been really pretty decent. I mean, you still have to find them, uh, but it's been pretty good. As far as the trout fishing goes, well, Long Island, our, our streams are doing really well. And I've been hearing from a lot of uh, new people. They've been fishing the, the three major ones, the, the Nesquad, the Connecticut, and the Carmens, and they're doing good. But you gotta put your time in and you gotta learn those streams. Uh, I've been hearing Dennis and Walter and Bill Belfi and John, they actually went up to the Delaware and they did a float. It's one of the best ways to fish the Delaware is by a float. You cover a lot of water, and with a guide, your success rate is going to go up. And they had a banner day. Everybody caught big fish. Some of them caught four fish, which is a really good day on the Delaware, all on dries. Uh, so it, it was pretty interesting. The beaver kill is also doing well. 
but you got to put your time in it be there for the uh for the hatches one of the biggest hatches we have is the green drake and it's going on well i think it's over <laughs> it's a very short hatch but that's what everybody's been catching on the core flies that's the spinner stage of the green drakes um i think it's over every year i try i'm going up there this weekend of course i was hoping for the green drakes but hey i'm getting out there fishing and i'm gonna have a great time so to next week tie lines everybody from the western sound we have nuno da costa from tire lord tackle in rye hey guys nuno here from the long island sound with another weekly fishing report for the fisherman magazine we're here in the western end of the Long Island Sound. Fishing has been phenomenal today. Striped bass fishing on live bait in top water. We got to do some videos. Absolutely stunning amount of fish out here. Lots of bunker, which is amazing. The fishing has been incredible. Bluefish also caught a bunch of bluefish today. That being said, porgies are still on fire to the east. Fluke fishing has been great. The lack of rain always helps improve the fluke fishing. Offshore, guys have done really well with the bluefin tuna and tilefish seem to keep chewing. So this is our report for this week. We have uh, bluefin sound charters here with another striped bass about to be released. Enjoy the week, guys. We finally have a great stretch of weather with a couple of days, maybe in the weekend to rain. But you know what, get out there. This is the best time of year to get out there and fish. Enjoy the week. Rob Greco from the LA Outdoorsman in Rockville Center reports in. Today we were out fluking with my dad, Rob Sr. and Victor, both from LA Outdoorsman. And as you can see, we got a nice uh, bag of keeper fluke, all in the bay on gulp and spearing. Um, we fish pretty much the whole, what, outgoing tide? Whole outgoing tide. Yeah. And uh, we're pretty productive. Uh, we're hoping to get outside and get on some stripers, but they seem to be on the move. The bunker were hard to find today. Oh, but uh, oh. And there was a lot of fog. But uh, the striper bite's been really good too. Uh, Martin Wink was out this week and had a bunch. Uh, Steve Howell was out and had a bunch again. Uh, all fish over 40 inches, so over that you have to let go. But if you could get on the bunker, you could definitely get on some really big bass. Um, and they are on the move, so they seem to be moving eastward. Uh, today, the reports were coming out by the, uh, by the needle. That's where guys were saying they were seeing a bunker. Uh, we didn't get out there today. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. It's been a while having reported from the Raritan Bay, but the action is definitely nonstop with the bass and blues. Manhattan of all sizes have uh, arrived, big pods um, between the adult size and small ones. Some of these manhatens, they're no bigger than probably three to four inches, which is a little unusual and pretty early for this time of year. You usually get those around August, September. Uh, the jumbo striped bass catch, the run, that's been going on pretty strong right outside of the uh, Jersey coast. Uh, tuna grounds, uh, some of them are moving up. Uh, a few guys caught them this week, but not in large numbers for the bluefin, uh, yellow fins. You're looking at the Wellington south of Jersey pretty much. That's where you're catching quite a few. Tile fish remaining strong. Fluke fishing's picking up substantially in the Raritan Bay. So that's great news. And um, yeah, that's about it. So got a few tournaments to attend to. And I'll keep you guys posted next week. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Music. Search for the Fishery Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast along with our other content. Hey, I hope everybody enjoys the weekend. There's some good fluking starting. We heard of two double digits this week. It's starting to heat up in the bays. Montauk is getting better as well. Striper fishing remains hot along the north and the south shores right now. And Montauk, that jig bite, is only getting started and getting even better. We'll see you next week.